Welcome everybody, this is part 2 of the Neurotrauma tutorial series, so make sure you watch part 1 before this. Last episode we covered all the basics and how to prepare and position yourself as a surgeon on a crew. There is something I forgot to mention last episode, so I'll mention it now. You may see my clothes are a little different. I recommend using the NT Surgery Plus mod. It'll make your time much easier, and the specific outfit is made specifically to prevent sepsis as much as possible. This mod will not change how any surgeries or operations work, so make sure your operations are carried out in this uniform if you're using it. I will be using it during the showcase to make sure I will not fail any skill checks, and all my demonstrations are clean and straightforward. You do not have to use this mod yourself, but I highly recommend it. With that out of the way, Today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about bones and afflictions to do with bones. Now that we're covering afflictions and what to do with them, each affliction will be separated into four parts. Preparation, where I'll show you what you need to be ready to deal with this problem. Elaboration, where I'll explain the affliction. Operation, where I'll silently demonstrate how to solve the problem. Then finally tips, where I'll tell you everything I know about the afflictions and its symptoms. We'll start here in the bone tutorial section of the Mercy Hospital, perhaps with this map to help me start off. The most common affliction here is blunt force trauma. Depending on which version of neurotrauma you have, the treatment may differ. I recommend using the newest version, of course. Blunt force trauma refers to bruising or bleeding under the skin. For this affliction, you need an item called a gel ice pack. The reason you don't keep these on you, though, is they must be refrigerated in a cold container. Like this one. All you do is apply the gel ice pack to the limb with blunt force trauma. Keep in mind, blunt force trauma has no symptoms, is immediately visible, and lowers your patient's movement and action speed. This affliction usually heals on its own, and ice packs don't immediately fix the problem, but more so speeds up the rate of which it is healed. The ice pack gives the chilled affliction, which will minorly reduce the patient's movement speed, but not by that much. It's generally safe to treat outside of your operation room if you have a moment to carry your cold medical case. Now we will cover dislocations. To prepare for a dislocation, all you need is a wrench and some painkillers like opium. A dislocation is when a bone slides or is pushed out of socket, and it causes the symptom intense pain. It's as easy as giving the patient opium and using the wrench on the patient's limb with the dislocation. To know some more about dislocations, dislocations can happen on either arm or leg. It's on an arm, the patient's swing speed is reduced. If located on the legs, the patient's movement speed will be reduced. Intense pain is the only symptom, and it will always appear visible before the dislocation without the use of a health scanner. The symptom intense pain will at small intervals lower the patient's movement speed. The patient will be unable to hold anything two-handed with a dislocated arm, and if they were holding something either two-handed or in that hand, they will drop it. If both arms are dislocated, the patient will not be able to hold or interact with anything. If both legs are broken, the patient will not be able to stand and will move by crawling. If the arms are also dislocated, the patient will be completely immobile. The last piece of information about dislocations is that technically you don't have to treat the symptom with opium if you don't want to. If the dislocation is fixed, the intense pain symptom will slowly go away on its own. The downside is fixing the dislocation without opium can stun your patient for a short moment. Make sure your surgical skill is high enough to do this though. If you fail the skill check with your wrench, you can cause a fracture. Make sure to weigh the risks and benefits of not using opium. Dislocations are easy to fix, as long as you're not actively being attacked. It's generally okay to fix them without the use of your operation room. Next is fractures. To prepare for fractures, carry bandages and gypsums. Fracture is when a bone is snapped or broken in some way and requires a slightly more complex operation. As you can see, I wrapped the afflicted limbs with a bandage, then applied the gypsum afterwards. Always make sure you do it in that order. Fractures share most things with dislocations. The first and only symptom is always intense pain, and it too will appear before the fracture becomes visible. This can make it difficult to tell if the problem is a dislocation or a fracture. 
The solution is to wait for the affliction to show up or use your health scanner on a limb with intense pain. Fractures will only happen on the arms and legs and will affect the patient similar to a dislocation. Only it lowers the patient's capabilities much more. Like dislocations, a patient with a broken arm cannot hold a two-handed item, and if an arm is broken while an item is being held, your patient will drop whatever they were holding. If both hands are broken, both hands will be disabled and not all actions will be locked completely. If one leg is broken, movement speed is severely reduced. If both legs are broken, your patient will be crippled and will only be able to move by crawling on the ground. If the arms and legs are all broken, your patient will be completely immobile. If the patient's legs are broken, you can temporarily work around casting it if you're out of gypsum with a wheelchair. I recommend always having one on you. This also applies to amputations, which I will cover in the trauma episode. Successfully casting a limb will give the affliction a plaster cast and will lower your patient's action time and speed. After it's been a few minutes, check and see if the fracture's still there with your health scanner. If you do not see a fracture with your health scanner, remove the plaster cast with trauma shears. Fractures are simply solved, so don't be afraid to fix the problem on the field without the use of your operation room. Now we will get into some more advanced stuff. Keep in mind this is all rated by difficulty to treat, in my opinion. So next is rib fractures. Rib fractures are when your ribs are broken, of course. To solve this problem, you need opium, your basic kit, for future reference when I say basic kit, I'm referring to your scalpel, hemostat, and skin retractors. You'll also need a bone drill, osteosynthesis implants, sutures, and a clean operating room. This operation is called osteosynthetic surgery. As you can see, I did something we refer to as an open surgery. That's what the basic kit is used for. I use it to open a limb if need be, and you'll be doing it a lot. Opium, morphine, and fentanyl all give the status effect analgesia, which means your patient is ready to be operated on, will not feel any pain during the operation, and will not go into traumatic shock. If your patient is running low on the analgesia effect, please apply more opium and more morphine for more time to operate. You don't want to continue an operation if your patient is fully conscious. That runs the risk of traumatic shock. However, it is okay to do an operation if your patient is unconscious. Next, after opening the chest, I use the drill on the ribs and then the osteosynthesis implants. Make sure it's always done in that order. It's important or else it won't work. The only symptoms is chest pain, which functions exactly like intense pain in every way, including appearing before the fracture is visible to you and giving the same movement speed of reduction lasting one second at a random interval. Since an open surgery is required, you must perform this operation in your operating room on an operation table, otherwise sepsis or traumatic shock can happen. Bandage your patient's chest to minimize issues if you're far from your med bay, as this will help prevent further problems such as pneumothorax on your way back to the submarine. I won't get too much into sepsis in this episode, but I will explain that it's cured with broad-spectrum antibiotics. This medicine comes with its own risks and problems, however, that's for a later time. Just know how to treat sepsis. Root fractures can cause other problems such as pneumothorax and internal damage, which will be covered in the trauma episode. Try to only do this operation in your operation room, but if it must be done on the field, make sure you have morphine or opium and broad-spectrum antibiotics handy. Morphine or opium to prevent traumatic shock and the antibiotics for sepsis, as it will happen. It is of mild importance to fix. Next is skull fractures. This is when your skull becomes cracked, of course. For this you need the same equipment. Opium, your basic kit, a bone drill, and osteosynthesis implants.
Remember, opium, scalpel, hemostat, skin retractors, drill, osteosynthesis implants, then a suture all on the patient's head. Make sure it's always in that order. Skull fractures have the headache symptom. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't cause anything, but headache is a symptom of many issues, so make sure you don't assume a headache always means a skull fracture. Other afflictions caused by skull fractures include adding a large amount of neurotrauma every half minute or so. You don't want neurotrauma, which will be covered heavily in the trauma episode. Be sure to wrap your patient's head with a bandage to minimize neurotrauma buildup if you're away from your submarine. Additionally, it causes internal damage, which will also be further explained in the trauma episode. Like rib fractures, make sure the operation takes place on your operation table, and make sure your operation room is sterile and clean. Make sure to have morphine or opium and antibiotics on hand if you want to do the surgery away from the surgery table. Morphine or opium to prevent traumatic shock and antibiotics to prevent sepsis. Last in the list of fractures, we have the deadliest and most dangerous fracture, the neck fracture. The neck fracture is when your thoracic or cervical spine, otherwise known as the neck, is broken. As you should know as a doctor, is the spine is the main railway for your nerves which are responsible for movement and reaction. For this operation, you need opium, your basic kit, a bone drill, osteosynthesis implants, spinal cord implants, and a suture. As you can see, after giving the opium, I used the basic kit on the head, used the drill, osteosynthesis implants, spinal cord implants before closing with the suture. It's important to use that order, because the neck fracture causes spinal cord injury to build up over time. So the neck must be fixed first before the spinal cord implants are used. Spinal cord injuries are a major emergency, and with my friend group, it's named a code blue, which means immediate medical attention no matter what other factors are at play. When the neck is fractured, you only have a few moments to move and speak before you completely lose control. You'll be unable to move or speak. If that sounds scary, it's because it is. It is preferable to do the surgery in your sterile operating room, but sometimes you don't have the chance, so make sure you have morphine or opium with broad spectrum antibiotics on hand. There's no measures to help before the operation, so make sure you get them to your room as fast as possible. Only do it in the field if you have to. This kind of injury is of major importance, and remember your crew is relying on you through these kinds of injuries. Make sure you know what you're doing. I know all this stuff may sound hard to keep up with, but don't give up. We're almost done with this course. The next and final affliction today is bone death. Bone death refers to the rapid deterioration of the bones and their inability to restore themselves. For this you need opium, your basic kit, a drill, multiple osteosynthesis implants, and multiple sutures.
Bone death is unique in the sense that it's not immediately visible. It can only be detected by a health scanner on the torso. Bones have their own health and can be damaged. If they're so damaged that they reach 100% bone damage, the bones will die and create fractures. Fractures can be casted, but this won't solve the bone death, only the fractures themselves. Once you've scanned a limb and confirmed the cause of the fracture is 100% bone damage, you have a long surgery to do. I recommend using morphine instead of opium if you're not used to operating quickly. Perform surgery on all limbs as it will break all of your limbs as well as your ribs and your skull. Perform osteosynthetic surgery on all six parts, both arms, both legs, chest, and skull. Causes of bone death are mainly radiation and sepsis, but can also be caused by kidney damage. It's important to know that bones are always regenerating and healing, but the system relies on your oxygen. So if your patient's not breathing, or in other words has the affliction hypoxemia at 100%, your bones will stop naturally regenerating. I will be teaching you how to solve these problems in the future, so hopefully you can avoid dealing with bone death altogether. This operation is to be performed in your operation room, and you must use morphine and keep prospection antibiotics on you if you plan to do this operation outside of your office. It is a major emergency and a code blue. Bone damage is the easiest section of neurotrauma to deal with. But I do hope this tutorial had everything you needed to know. By understanding bones and their afflictions, you've made a big step towards mastering neurotrauma. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Feel free to ask me anything in the comments. I'm happy to answer. Have a good one, and happy sailing.